Welcome to my garden here in Derbyshire and normally I'd be joining all of you in Chorley for the wonderful Chorley Flower Show but as we're all aware sadly this is a slightly different year and things aren't happening so I wanted to share some flowers with you from my garden and yesterday I wandered around the garden and gathered some flowers together to hopefully inspire all of you who would normally be attending this fantastic show to go into your gardens to pick a bunch and make an arrangement. So I'm going to start with this galvanised container and I've got some chicken wire inside here and a bowl that's just holding the water, grid of chicken wire over the top just to place the flowers into. And as many of you know, because I'm sure lots of you have watched my demonstrations at the show and it's a great show to be presenting flowers from, you'll know that I normally start off with some foliage. So in true form, we're going to get some foliage into here again and this is just some really very pretty little small leafed hebe but you could use some privet or some pyrus or some conifer whatever you've got in your garden really just to start to make a, a framework and to fill out some of the space because if you think about it in a, a bowl such as this there's a huge amount of open space within the center that I need to reduce down before I start to place the flowers into here so getting some foliage in there it's like it's like the undergarments of an arrangement it's it's doing a crucial job there to uh, keep everything in place later so a bit of foliage always handy to begin with so a few tips if you want to make an arrangement then one of the biggest tips I would always say to people is if you're picking from your garden then make sure you don't go out into the garden pick the flowers and bring them straight indoors because that means they're not going to last terribly well we better to pick them and give them a long drink ideally overnight but certainly for not less than eight hours by just placing them in a bucket of water with some added flower food into there so they can condition they can drink and a lot of people say to me oh you know I've not got flower food Jonathan is there any alternatives that I could use well what you could do is make your own flower food and it's fairly easy to do that and to make your own flower food all you need to do is to put a little dash of bleach into the water some lemonade into the water there spoonful of sugar and if you can you might want to put a dash of gin in there as well and don't forget a paracetamol tablet because that stops the water from getting any infection and turning so you can have a bash at making some flower food it's a it's a bit like floral alchemy isn't it there that I'm sharing with you well I've got my different foliages going on in here I've got some climbing hydrangea hydrangea petiolaris what a great name for a plant isn't it and climbing hydrangea will cling and sucker to a wall or a fence or a trellis and the nice thing about it is it's self-supporting so you don't need to tie it in it will just stay there and then during usually June time it has an abundance of elderberry like lacy flower heads on there elderflower rather than elderberry and it has that wonderful limey green quality to it and the good thing about it is it's a shade lover so it will grow in shade so it's not over choosy really so it's great for growing behind a garage or if you've got a dull wall that you need to lift and there's not a lot of sunlight on there then the hydrangea is a perfect choice for that next foliage that's going into here is this little chap which is a bit more of a traily cascady type of foliage and it's got the most bizarre name this again is another vine another trailer and this is the ampelopsis so I'm sharing my ampelopsis with you all Chorley friends and what a, a mad name isn't it for a flower sometimes it's called the jade vine or the porcelain vine because after the flowers finish it has wonderful little berries on it that are the colour almost of dolly mixtures they're in pinks and jade greens and creams so quite an attractive thing to grow so I've got my foliage in there in fact I'm just going to swap this bucket round for a moment and just give you a little peek at all those flowers look how fantastic they are so they're all gathered from the garden and I want to add all these into this container now to begin the arrangement so you can probably see that I've already got most of the space into here covered with foliage before I begin adding any more decorative materials into here and that's a really good thing to remember to do blank it out with the foliage first then start to add flowers in now often when I'm doing a demonstration 
people will just say, oh, Jonathan, you know, it looks like you're aimlessly sticking those in and not overthinking too much about what you're doing. Well, virtually, that's true. Don't overanalyze an arrangement. I want this to look like it's just been picked very naturally from the garden. It's uncontrived, it's naturalistic. So I don't want to be too formulaic or mathematical and get it too symmetrical. I want to keep some flow, some openness in here with the shapes. Lupins, well these, ladies and gentlemen, these are the second crop of lupins. So the big primary spires have long since gone, but by chopping it, not fully back, but chopping it partially back, we've got a second flush of rather smaller, but very, very beautiful spires of lupins to enjoy. Now, if you're popping lupins into an arrangement, do remember that they are hollow stemmed. So these rather curvaceous hollow stemmed flowers need immediately to go into the water. So I take a bucket of water directly into the cutting garden with me, cut those lupins, plunge them straight into that water, and that will ensure that there's no airlock going to form. And by an airlock forming, what we mean is a blockage in the stem. It's a bit like people when they get hardening of the arteries. So if that stem gets blocked, water can't travel up there. So we have to try and do something to open it back out. So if you get it straight into the water, you're never going to have that problem. Well, it's candy floss time here in the garden. And we've got the fantastic astilbe, these plumes of feather-like chenille from the astilbes. And the stilbies, great little shade loving plants, a very reliable, easy to grow, herbaceous perennial that is quite happy anywhere in the garden. It's not over bothered about soil, but it does need quite a bit of moisture. So if you've got a moisture retentive soil, that's preferable. If not, add in plenty of well watered humus and manure just to enrich the soil and keep it well watered until it gets established but I love these feathery plumes. It's like, it reminds me of being a kid back at the fair and having a, a sickly um, indulgence of candy floss. Can you remember having candy floss at the fair and you always felt ill afterwards, didn't you? But it's just like that. It's like a plume within the garden. So very pretty and it's an interesting texture. And you can see how that texture of the astilbe there is just competing and marrying with the Alcamilla mollis, the ladies mantle, the lime green. Well another firm favourite of mine here in the garden are astrantias and astrantias are one of the hardest working flowers within the garden. They absolutely flower their little socks off and if you remember to keep chopping them back then you'll get multiple successions of flower and this is a rather nice one and one to look out for and if you're at Chorley at the flower show today, which we all very much wish we should be, then I would advise you to go and have a wander around the fantastic nurseries that are exhibiting there and look for an astrantia called Sunningdale variegata. And the nice thing about astrantia Sunningdale variegata is it has variegated foliage. So when the leaves first come out around April time, it has a really fantastic variegation on there which is golden so you've got gold and green together it's almost as attractive as a hosta which is you know something to be celebrated because you've got a perennial with great foliage on there but also fantastic flowers well quite a weedy type of thing but nonetheless very very useful and that of course is the fever few and fever few it's a daisy shape so it's that archetypal very natural, very country looking daisy shaped flower, which is perfect for putting into a summer bouquet or a summer flower arrangement, such as I'm making here. And feverfew, once you've got it going in the garden, will seed itself around. Now, I don't find it's a pest. Some people find it a little bit too invasive, but I'm on clay soil, so it does seed, but it doesn't take over. And you can easily pull it out if it's in an unwanted space. But it is extremely useful because it's what I would call a great filler. So if you're picking some sweet peas or you're picking some roses from your garden, then just add a few sprigs of feverfew into the arrangement and it will pad it out, it will fill it out. And there's always something wonderful about including a daisy shaped flower because it gives a certain country feel, a relaxed, very informal um, expression to the arrangement because, I don't know, 
daisies are one of those flowers that has got a romanticism attached to it and immediately it makes us think of the countryside. So I'll show you how I'm looking here. Now you might be thinking, I'd stop Jonathan, you've got plenty in there, but I want to give it a real lush feel and, and celebrate a flower show, which is what we would normally be doing. So I'm gonna add in with more layers of flowers and keep telling you about these plants because they're all great cutting flowers to grow and perfect for an average garden. And this one is brilliant if you want to edge your drive or you want to grow it in a, a wall and you want it to tumble down. Equally, it will thrive just in a border in exactly the same way. And this is giving me fragrance. It's giving me quite a um, sort of musky scent to the design. And this is the Napita. And this is Napita Six Hills Giant. And it's got these spires of very soft blue flowers. And the nice thing about this Napita, if you cut it and cut out the central stem, all these smaller ones follow on in a succession. So you'll get quite a prolonged period of flower from it. But it's a great one if you want to get the bees and the pollinators into the garden because Napita is a really great nectar source for them and they will thrive on feasting on this. And it will grow absolutely with no concern whatsoever. Wherever you put it, folks, I guarantee it will grow for you. It's almost one of those impossible to kill type of flowers. So it doesn't mind damp soil, it doesn't mind shady soil, but it's prerequisite, it's absolute requirement is sunshine. So you must ensure that you give it a sunny, well open aspect in the garden. If you put it in shade, it won't be happy and it won't grow in a shady condition. Well, moving on, let's add a few clematis into here. So I've got these rather sweet little clematis, which are giving me sort of a slightly more dominant shape of flower. And flower shapes are important when we are constructing an arrangement. And the more different shapes we can include, the more interest we give. So I've got spires, I've got points from the lupins, from the napetia. I've got rounded shapes from the astrantia and the matricaria, the fever few. And now I've got a flat, open form from these clematis. And these really, these are sort of the star performers because they're the ones that are attracting my eye with the most visual impact. So it's a bit like, you know, putting a, an item of clothing on or, or for ladies putting a piece of jewelry on or gentlemen putting a piece of jewelry on. You want that to be the thing that sort of catches people's eye and grabs the attention. And that's what these clematis are doing. These are the ones that are saying, uh, notice me. Well, a few more spires, because I'm building the levels up. If you think about it, I started quite low, didn't I, with the foliage, and now we're graduating the levels upwards. So a few more spires, a few more points from some Veronica, some hardy Veronica here. This is Veronica Spicata, that's got these fantastic, very angular, very pointed stems. So quite an architectural type of flower in the garden. Quite a bit of drama from those. And then I want to include another layer, another level of scent, and I'm going to add in some marjoram. And this marjoram, everybody, smells absolutely intoxicating. When I was gathering this yesterday, I couldn't resist just running my hands just up the branches of the marjoram to release its aromatic flavour. And oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Herbs in an arrangement are always advantageous because a, they're usually pretty and decorative and visually attractive, but secondly, they're giving you fragrance and they're giving you some scent in a design. And if I was placing this on a table or in the hallway, people could just brush their hands past here and just enjoy releasing the fragrance from the marjoram there. And while I'm talking of fragrance, I'm gonna pop a few little sweet peas into here just to give that very high summer feel to the design. Now, last week here in Derbyshire, and I'm sure it was very similar, similar for my friends over the Pennines there in Chorley and the Greater Manchester area, we had lots and lots of rain. So as you all know, sweet peas are not happy when it's rain. So they had one hell of a bashing as the rain clouds opened out and gorgeous water descended to earth. But not gorgeous for these sweet peas because it absolutely dashed and ruined so many of the flowers. And it takes them a while to recover 
after they've been a victim of intense rain but they're, they're starting to bounce back there's lots of new buds forming and the thing is with sweet peas as you all know the more you pick the more they keep flowering for you so don't ever feel guilty about picking your sweet peas so nearly there just a few final flowers to add a flourish of color into here and a few little wispy ones just to repeat the shape and the color of the clematis and this catenache is a gorgeous little flower i don't know how well you can spot that but this straw like flower because it's very similar to a helichrysum or an everlasting flower produces an abundance of blooms on stiff erect wiry stems and it's self-supporting although it looks really grass-like and wispy it's quite a rigid little plant in the garden and as you all know there's not that many blue flowers out there in the borders so this brings a welcome flourish of blue into the garden into the cutting garden and it's great for adding and including into an arrangement and with it being an everlasting type of flower you can all always dry these so you could pick them along with some marjoram and some lavender and anything like the alcamilla mollis and the fever fuse and dry them and drying flowers has really crept back into fashion again so if you pick some of these flowers and if you want to dry flowers you have to pick them on a nice dry day so not when it's rained not when there's been a heavy dew so pick them during the driest part of the day which is sort of usually around midday gather the flowers and just bunch them quite loosely hang them upside down somewhere warm well ventilated but out of direct sunlight and then they will dry within a few weeks time and then you can bring them indoors and enjoy them over the winter months and they'll give you a bit of colour so although we're not at Chorley Flower Show this weekend my heart is with all of my friends who would normally be at the show so like so many of you I'm missing that wonderful backdrop of the hall the splendid lake there and that great location that ancient parkland that's normally full of fantastic nurseries and exhibitors so I hope I've brought a little bit of my flower talk to all of you through virtual Chorley Flower Show and perhaps this explosion this riot of garden colour will encourage all of you to go out pick a few flowers and make something creative to bring a flower show into your own homes and to celebrate the wonderful summer months that we have during our British Isles. So enjoy the flowers and fingers crossed I'll be back with you all to enjoy next year's 2021 Chorley Flower Show. Take care everybody. Enjoy the flowers. <laughs>